Welcome back to Boring Reviews. Boring Land. Oh, Come just on. kidding. Blasphemer. Oh, Hello, my. Boring Review Nation. Kind of pointless. We know all things. All right. Welcome back to Boring Reviews. Nick here. Jordy there. And today we are looking at another Geography Now video. It's Ladies Choice. I actually, I had I had so many I couldn't choose from, so I've decided to pick the one that um, Nick was not happy with at the moment. <laughs> I do not hate any countries, believe it or not, and I say believe it or not because some people are very passionate about certain countries. I am not. I don't get too stressed out about it, but this one does irk me a little bit. Which one did you choose, Jody? I picked Geography Now on the Netherlands. And the Netherlands, first of all, it makes me think of the Friends episode where he's trying to show Joey how dumb he is. He's like, she's uh, she's Dutch. That means she's from the Netherlands, right? Uh, nice try. The Netherlands is the place that Peter Pan goes to. <laughs> <laughs> but the Netherlands just eliminated U.S. in the World Cup, so that's why I'm a little sore about it. They also beat the U.S., I think, in cricket not too long ago as well, which... I think helped eliminate them from the T20 World Cup. So we see how it is. Just want to bully us around in the sports that we may not be dominant in. But I still have nothing against the Netherlands. And I'm excited to learn a little bit about it right now. Me too. My grandparents have a whole bathroom um, decorated because they have traveled the entire world and they spent a entire good amount. World. Well, not the entire world, but they've spent Kidding. a good amount traveling and they lived in Europe for many, many years. And so they have like a lot of Dutch things. Like there's just this bathroom that's just like Dutch. I don't know. I just love it. It's always it's like Dutch. so happy. It's got a Dutch oven. Yeah, right? She uh, She's almost wearing like the, the, the Netherlands orange there. Oh, there it's you a go. little Check more out. brownish than the orange, than but the still orange. not too bad. But if you like anything about our reaction to the Netherlands Geography Now video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're aware of your of our next uploaded videos. I was thinking, like, and don't forget to like their video, too. Hey, so. we might be alert of their videos. Let yeah. us know if you have videos out there, <laughs> especially about the Netherlands, for crying out loud. All right. He's wearing the Netherlands orange. Take that, Jody. I can't pull off that kind of an orange. I'm too yellowy tone. You're not Dutch, I guess. Here we go. Hey guys, so this is gonna be a little awkward. Why? Because two years ago, my Dutch friend Vincent, who used to do the animations before I regrettably hired Ken. Wait, what? He came and visited Ouch. here in LA. Long story short, I promised him he could be in the Netherlands episode. So we pre-shot some footage and this was the intro we made. I flew over this guy, a real Dutchman, say hi to Vincent right here. Hey Vincent, hey. <laughs> Vincent, I know the Dutch are tall, but just step down from the box, okay? Just step down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can never top those days. Oh, That's this episode awesome. is on the Netherlands. <laughs> what happened? You guys started? You guys never made it? Everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. No. Now, there are many countries that deal with water issues. Some lack water, some have too much water, and some, like the Netherlands, have bridled the wild stallion and have learned how to control the water and use it to their advantage. Water is probably the most powerful element in the Netherlands, and without it, hmm. they would be... I don't know, pretty useless. So what do you say, 2016 oh my gosh. Vincent? And then now, politieke geography. So yeah, stop calling Seamless. this place Holland. That's just one part of the country. Even though their country's national tourism website is called holland.com. You're not helping us here, Dutchies. <laughs> oh, and hey, there's a town called The Hulk. First of all, the country is located in northwestern yes, Europe, along the, the North Sea, bordered by Germany and Belgium. The country is divided into 12 provinces. Here's 2016 Vincent naming all of them for you. They are Limburg, North Holland, Zeiland, South Holland, Utrecht, Gelderland, Overijssel, Drenthe, Groningen, Friesland, North Holland, and the newest province, Flevoland. Almost all of Flevoland was reclaimed from the Zuiderzee in the 19th so besides being famous for making cheese and clogs, we also make our own land. The country kind of has its own <laughs> Amsterdam, the largest That's city awesome. and economic hub of the country, and home to the royal palace. And just to skip over the third largest city, I think we've heard of that place. The second capital, which that holds too? the seat of government, as well as the International Court of Justice. The second largest city, though, would be Rotterdam, which holds the busiest seaport in all of Europe. The busiest airport, though, is of course Amsterdam's Schiphol International, Europe's third busiest airport, carrying nearly 70 million passengers annually. Now Jeez. we reach the overseas territories. Apart from the mainland European part, the country actually holds sovereign 
sovereignty over six other island entities in the Caribbean, oh, remnants of the colonial past. These are collectively called the Dutch Caribbean. And here's where it gets a little confusing. Technically, the Netherlands is a country made up of four countries, the mainland Netherlands, as well as three other constituent countries, kind of like what Wales and Scotland are to the UK. They are mm -hmm. Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin, which is actually We've heard all this. shared with the French overseas territory of the same name, but in French. This means that this one island is the only area which the Netherlands technically borders France. These guys hold a high level of autonomy. They can have their own constitutions and currency. Otherwise, the remaining three islands are Bonaire, St. Eustatius, and Little Saba, which, by the way, has the shortest airport runway in the world. These three oh, fall under the title of special municipalities and do not belong to any province. They are directly controlled by the Dutch government. However, in 2011, they decided to switch currencies and adopt the U.S. dollar. All these oh. islands lie in the subregion known as the Lesser Antilles. Aruba, Curaçao, and Bonaire are usually referred to as the ABC Islands, lying in the subregion of the Leeward Antilles, whereas St. Eustatius, Saba, and St. Martin usually called the SSS Islands. I did not realize Curaçao was so small. It's Islands. Mainly mind, baseball players from there. All six of these islands yeah, were called the Netherlands crazy. Antilles and operated collectively as a single constituent country with the capital at Willemstad in Curaçao. Oh. They even competed separately in the Olympics. With the exception of Aruba, who had autonomy in 1986, it wasn't until the early 2000s when they all voted for their future, and it kind of went like this. Okay, guys, you have four options for your future. Choose wisely. You can have closer ties to us, remain just as you are in the Netherlands Antilles, autonomy as a constituent country within the Kingdom of the Netherlands, or you can opt for complete independence as a new nation and break away from us. We vote for autonomy as constituent countries. Me too. What the? We want closure ties and we'll settle for special municipality status. Really, Bonaire? You're one of us, the ABC Island. You're really gonna ditch us like that and leave us with this half Frenchy Magoo? Yep, deal with it. And that's basically how it went down. <laughs> so there you go. That's how you make a Netherlands. Waterways dominate oh, the country. Man. There's even a town with no roads and only canals. But how did it end up this way? Somewhere around the 9th century, people were kind of fed up with all the flooding and they invented these seawalls known as dikes, which surrounded polders or reclaimed land plots protected by the dikes. To this day, the Netherlands has claimed awesome. of its total landmass from the sea. So, what would happen if all the dikes were destroyed and all the water just came and flooded everything? Scientists speculate Jeez. that the country would go from looking like this to this. Wow. Oh, Amsterdam Gosh. Would be gone. Yep. Luckily, the Dutch are fantastic. Yeah, that's really impressive. This Super impressive. Super impressive. Cool. And speaking of engineering, there are so many notable spots to check out in case you ever visit. So many museums. Jeez. But the most notable one probably being the Rijksmuseum mm -hmm. in Amsterdam, the Royal Palace, the Van Gogh Museum, the Anne Frank House, numerous Everyone I know that goes to Amsterdam absolutely loves towns, it. So many amusement parks like these, the enclaves and exclaves of Beryl Nassau. We talked about this I in the Belgium episode. It. The world's largest flower garden at Kuchenhof, Austerlitz Pyramid, this prehistoric burial site, and of course, there are somewhere around 1,000 historic windmills looking. left awesome. in the country from the 1800s, mostly in the Kinderdijk area, a UNESCO heritage site. Keep in mind, though, the country has a ton of so modern smart. wind turbines that help supply energy to the nation, a topic that will be discussed in... Greek philosopher Pythias visited in the 3rd century BC, and he said about this place, more people have died in the Jeez. struggle against water than in the struggle against men. The Netherlands is really unlike any other country in Europe because in order for them to even have physical land, a lot of work has to go into it. For one, the country is the lowest country in Europe, elevation-wise. Over a quarter of the land and That's a fifth crazy. of the population lies below sea level, and about half of the land lies less than a meter above sea level. The lowest point actually being here at Soidplas Polder, and the highest point of the mainland European part of the country at a small oh hill God. called Possibly We're like way above that just in our city. Meters high. Yeah. However, in the entire kingdom of the Netherlands, the highest nice point name. would actually be Mount Scenery, a potentially active volcano on the island of Saba in the Caribbean. Back to mainland Europe, though. Within this complex system of waterways and canals, the famous Rhine River that goes through all of Europe and the longest in the country actually ends in Rotterdam. The largest body of water would be Lake or Bay Yelsemir, contained within the N302 Yelsemir. and E22 highways. In order to manage all the flooding in the south, though, the Netherlands has undergone one of the largest engineers projects in modern history. The Delta Works is a series of massive elevated levees that close off sea estuaries, preventing flooding. They even have backup Jeez. levees in case one down the line bursts. In the north, though, the Walden Islands act as kind of like natural barriers against the sea. All this land reclamation has left many of the inland areas exposed to what are labeled as the largest open sand drifts in Europe. Keep in mind, they are not deserts, but rather strange hmm. wet sandy plots in the middle of green shrubbery, a rare natural sight to come across anywhere in the world. So in a nutshell, the entire country is basically one big 
big river delta. Hmm. <laughs> we should hang out sometime. Whew. So that's just about it for now. I gotta get my triple shot of espresso break, which means we need a guy who knows a few oh. things. <laughs> Adokin! Yeah! Besides all the water chaos, Netherlands is quite a powerful nation considering its size. They rank in the top 20 largest world economies, usually around 17th or 16th place, and they rank somewhere in the top 5 to 10 largest exporters on Earth. In fact, they have the oldest stock exchange in the world, dating back to 1602. Didn't that lead to like the whole tulip mania thing where people sold a single bulb for the price of like an entire ship? That was not the stock market. That was just a socioeconomic phenomenon and at its height sold for 10 times oh the annual wage. For a tulip? Anyway, today, although they produce about 80% of the world's tulips and over half of the world's or cut flower bowl. exports, their economy is mostly driven by the service and energy sectors. After the discovery of a natural gas field in 1959, the Dutch became a fuel powerhouse. The Shell Company became the largest and most international no Dutch. Dutch company either. in the world. Besides the petroleum industry, though, the Dutch are well known for their electronics and tech innovation. The company Philips invented the audio tape, which helped pioneer other formats like videotapes, CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays. Yeah, the company was Dutch, but keep in mind it was invented in Hassel, Belgium. Oh, Belgium. <laughs> you, Don't try to f***ing take this from us. Otherwise, the Dutch have made great strides towards environmental protection. It's not uncommon to find That's animal cool. crossing bridges to allow wildlife to cross over highways. Over 70 mammals oh exist here. Oh my gosh, I've never seen hares, that. Hedgehogs, awesome. Goats, and deer. In addition, according to their government website, they produce over 65 billion euros in vegetable, fruit, flour, meat, and dairy products. Speaking of which, the modern orange-colored carrot was originally bred orange here in the Netherlands to specifically honor the king. Since then, orange carrots are now kind of an international staple and speaking of which food some top notable dishes you guys the Dutch geography peeps suggested we mentioned include mm. things like okay. various types of stamp pots Dutch pancakes with powdered sugar apple tart <gasps> those the best Split love stroopwafels Brookwurst stroopwafels so many potato dishes brined herring and smoked eel <laughs> gin was invented here sorry Brits for what? breakfast chocolate sprinkles <laughs> on toast is common and the pride and joy of the nation how oh, yeah. cheese yep that's how you pronounce it, guys. Oh, and keep in mind, they used to be the largest beer exporters in the world. Heineken being their top brand until Mexico beat them in 2010. <laughs> oh, wow. Cool. It's also important to note that you will probably find lots of Indonesian and Surinamese dishes like satay or salted cod buns. A little cultural cue that hints towards the colonial past. Which brings us to... Thank you, Noah. Follow powers. me on Instagram. Nice. Yep. <laughs> Just I love it. Now, in Europe, you have all different types of people that operate with all different customs and ideologies. Here, they have two sayings that kind of sum up how a lot of their country operates. Meten is weten and geselligheid kent geen tijd. How is that, Dutchies? Terrible? Good? <laughs> Get what I oh, give. What I give. Anyway, the country has about 17.5 million people and is the most densely populated nation in Europe. About 77% of the population identifies as Dutch, to whatever extent that may mean, whereas 10% are other Europeans, and the remainder are made up of other people groups, mostly Turks, Indonesians, as well as the Surinamese, and surprisingly, even some Americans. They use the Euro as their currency, they use the Type C and F plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, we all know that Dutch is the official language of the Netherlands. However, if you speak English, you should have no problem at all visiting. Netherlands has the highest proficiency wow. in English out of any non-English official country in the world. Somewhere around 9 out of 10 Dutch people claim they can comfortably speak English and around 94% of the country is in some way bilingual. Geography Anna told me a joke. Many times Dutch kids will ask their parents, Hey mom. Yes honey. Why do we have to learn English but the British don't have to learn Dutch? Because our ancestors decided it would be a great idea to trade New York for Suriname and one small island in Indonesia. It's important to note, though, that there are two other regional languages accepted in Dutch society. They are Frisian, spoken in the northern Friesland region, and the other being Papimiento, a Dutch Creole spoken in the ABC Islands. And it's already kind of well known that the Dutch are the tallest people on average in the world, men averaging around <laughs> six foot one and women around five foot seven. And once again, here's 2016 Vincent explaining. Latest studies have shown that natural selection has been the biggest reason. Being tall equal to being more athletic, successful, and healthy. Many educated men start families after their studies. Fast forward a couple of years, with length being very heritable, and the result is a nation of giants. <laughs> yeah, we're out breeding How shorts. dare you? Mm. Religion in the Netherlands is interesting because historically, they used to be predominantly Christian, mostly Protestant, but today about half the population identifies as unaffiliated, which depending on who you ask could be anything from the largest unaffiliated group, agnostics, at about 34%, to the growing number of eatists at around 28%, which is kind of like
like a technical term for spiritual but not religious. Otherwise, Islam at about 5% of the population is mostly practiced by Turkish and Indonesian communities. Christianity, although not practiced regularly by most of the people, still Christmas. plays a heavy yeah. cultural role in the Netherlands. Holidays like Christmas, Easter, Pentecost, and Ascension are still celebrated by everyone in a Dutch manner. At one point, they were a vast empire that spanned across every inhabited continent. Australia was at one point called New Holland, mm -hmm. New Zealand, named after the Zeeland province, <laughs> Tasmania, named after this Dutch guy, New York was once called New Amsterdam, and so on. Otherwise, what is the Dutch way of doing things? Geography Many of you guys, peeps. the Dutch geography have told me, there's a Dutch saying, act normal, which is ironic considering that they are almost anything but normal. And here's random Hannah to explain culture stuff. Historically, the Dutch have always kind of had a counter-traditional mindset that shaped the way they developed as a nation. For one, they are one of the few remaining monarchies left in the world, technically a unitary parliamentary constitutional monarchy that limits the royal powers. And the people generally like their king. He even has a holiday to himself, and the entire country wears the national color of orange. Of course, the country is known for being a frontrunner in passing what many in the world see as controversial laws. They were the first country to legalize same-sex oh. marriage, they have regulated legal prostitution, euthanasia, and they have a policy of tolerance towards recreational soft drugs like marijuana. People 18 years or older are allowed up to 5 grams on them, Jeez, otherwise it's a misdemeanor. Muscles. They are world renowned for excelling in field hockey, speed skating, and volleyball teams. Sailing is of course one of their Jeez. longest pastimes. They even have a huge festival once every Oh, that it's just me out with all those sailed boats. Amsterdam That's a festival. lot. For some reason, it's common for people to give birth in their own homes as opposed to a hospital. About one third of all babies are born this way. Uh, what about those clog things? Ah, yes. Well, in the past, they actually served a very useful purpose. They were worn by farmers, fishermen, and artisans in the past to protect hmm. their feet from nails, fish hooks, and other sharp objects. Today, they are mostly sold as souvenirs, and very few people actually wear them, but they're pretty cool. Oh, and hey, Anna, what's up with all those spinny <laughs> windmill thingy ma bobbers? Ah, yes, the iconic symbol of the Netherlands. Well, many of these historic windmills were actually hmm. used to pump out excess water to reclaim the land that they now use for farming, all before electricity. And as for music, the- Actually, I got this one. Barb said I could have my own segment in the show now instead of just being a one-liner guy. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Keith has been upgraded, so yeah. <laughs> well, well, enjoy it. <laughs> well, that just happened. Again, I guess everybody has superpowers now. Historically speaking, the Dutch contributed much to the Baroque period at the end of the Renaissance, with numerous composers, organ players, and vocalists rooted in Christianity. Traditional clog dancing was also a cool way to add percussion to folk music in rural areas. Today, however, even though there are many genres the Dutch enjoy, electronic music reigns supreme. Most of the best well-known DJs in the EDM scene- I heard about two of those people so far. From the Netherlands. And the Amsterdam dance event, ADE, is is the world's top and largest electronic music conference. So if you come out here, get ready to get shocked with some musical electricity. Thank you, Keith. And speaking of the development of the Netherlands over time, let's talk about history in the quickest way I can put it. Hamburg and Bronze Age cultures, Iron Age with Celt and Germanic groups, Gallic Wars, the Romans come in, Frankish kingdoms, Charlemagne, blah, blah, blah. Friesland once had a Viking ruler, Lotharingia, Holy Roman Empire, confusing Burgundian and Spanish Habsburg and city-states, the Spanish takeover, Dutch revolt, 80 years of war against Spain, <laughs> this hero. dude is a hero, Golden yep. Age and stock market, Dutch East India Company, exploring years, Dutch empire, Napoleon drama, Belgium breaks away, Luxembourg breaks away, World War One, relatively neutral, World War Two, attacked by Germans, not neutral, decolonialism after the war, mining golden age, founding co-members of the European coal and steel community, which would later become the EU, government encourages over half a million people to move wow. out, Euro adopted, and here we are today. Some notable people you guys, the Dutch <laughs> geography people suggest we mention, might include people like William of Orange, the first king, Michael de Reuter, possibly the most Jeez. famous painters, Vincent van Gogh and Rembrandt, Antony van Leeuwenhoek, Willem Berendt, Abel Taz, Anne Frank, Max Verstappen, Glennis Grace, Dick Bruna, these soccer players, these skaters, and of course the royal family. And of course there's so many others I could have mentioned. Of course I butchered all the pronunciations, but we're really running out of time and we gotta finish this marathon. So without further ado, let's see who the Netherlands hangs out Friends. with. Now, there's a reason why it's called going Dutch when paying for a meal. The Netherlands likes to share. Systematic and mathematically equivalent to what is owed to each based on the merit they've earned. First of all, pretty much all the former colonies have some kind of amicable relation to the Netherlands. The Afrikaans language in South Africa is basically just an Africanized version of Dutch. Tons of Surinamese and Indonesians have been migrating to the Netherlands for decades. Otherwise, the USA and Canada are very close friends as well. During World War II, the royal family actually took refuge in Canada, and Canada actually quickly changed the law in which the hospital was temporarily considered extra 
territory oh, so that wow. the princess could be That's born so Dutch. Sweet. To this day, the Netherlands sends like tons that. of flowers every year in gratitude. For the U.S., the two go way back all the way to New Amsterdam before it was New York. The Dutch have immigrated to the U.S. for centuries. Five American presidents have been of Dutch descent. They are each other's third largest direct foreign investors. They are both charter members of NATO since 1949. And overall, in most global affairs, the two usually work together as close allies. With Germany, it's like a funny love-hate relationship. Like, the two share so much historically, both being under the same influences like the Western Roman Empire, the Franks, and even their first king, William of Orange, belonged to a German royal house. Then again, World War II was kind of like a jerk move, and the Dutch never really forgot about it. But nonetheless, they've moved on, and today things are fine. Germany is their largest trading partner, both in imports and exports. Many Germans and Dutch cross over and visit, study, live, and have families with each other's countries. When it comes to their best friend, however, almost every single Dutch person I have talked to has said their little brother they love picking fun <laughs> on and calling stupid, stupid Belgium. Or at least specifically the northern Flanders region of Belgium where the Dutch speakers are. And many see the Flanders region as just an extension of the Dutch realm. The royal families love each other. King William Alexander even bestowed the Knight Grand Cross to King Philip and his wife. Flemish and Dutch people have been intermarrying and cooperating side by side since the beginning. And even after Belgium's independence, they've still clung on as the only two Dutch official speaking nations in Europe. And even then, Belgium is only half Dutch speaking, so they really can't afford to separate ties. In conclusion, the lowest nation in Europe with the tallest people on earth and with centuries of discovery, invention, innovation, and tradition, it's no wonder why the Dutch say they keep their heads above water. Seen that Stay one. tuned, New Zealand is coming up next. So once again, Vincent, thank you so much for being in this episode. Our favorite Dutchman, you have made your <laughs> Dutch punch. <laughs> Dutch punch. I've heard of that before. So when he talked, as soon as his friend Vincent was talking, <laughs> it reminded me of all the like Dutch films that I've seen, like sp specifically with Kai. Like they have some cute little romances. With the horrible dubbing. No, but it, like we read the subtitles, oh, okay. so we actually listened to it. That's why his accent, like, reminded me of like when he was talking. Yeah. Because they have that like kind of accent when they talk. But no, I love the language too. It's very pretty. Yeah, absolutely. I mean. Growing up in a country where, like we said many times, the big, not the biggest in geography, you hear a lot about the Netherlands. You hear a lot about the Dutch. Um, very, there's a lot in our history, which I think that's cool that he mentioned it right there. That you know goes way back when, all the way down mm -hmm. to New Am back to New Amsterdam or whatever. I learned a lot from this video that I've never known. Like in every video, but specifically for me, what was really interesting is how they saw. Well, you know the land. It's a low elevation, there's water over, but we can actually find a way to get rid of the water or push it back specifically so we can have that land back. That forward, I can't remember when he said they started doing that and building those dikes or whatever so they can get that back, but they've reclaimed, what was it, like 20% of the that's land crazy. or something like that. I think that's amazing. That's absolutely phenomenal. Yes. And then to put so many safeguards. I respect anyone that has a vision that can see what's possibly going to take place in the future and let's prepare for that right mm -hmm. now and that's exactly what they're doing. To me that was absolutely amazing and to hear that if those things were to break or those things were to falter or fail, 20% of that land is going to be underwater. I, I don't know the people that live there, but man, I hope that never happens because that well, would just be disastrous. Right? Oh my gosh. Which is would. why they have so many safeguards. But I was just saying, they said they had the safeguards, but I respect that too because I feel like Half of our country is asking for things like that, but we never do that. We seem to... You wait until something bad happens. Yes, and that's it, a huge generalization, but... Yes, but I feel like everything's like a band-aid, you know, or, oh, well, we'll take care of it when it happens. We'll take care of it when it happens. But it's smart to plan ahead, and it just seems like they're very resourceful with everything that they have. I yes. mean, all the stuff that they're talking about. Each time we watch these, I'm like, I want to move there. I want to move there. <laughs> I want to move there. Well, and I don't so know if I could move there. move there because I'd be like looking at all the people like this. Yeah. I'm not the tallest person, so I'd be like barbs, like holy cow, these people are tall. The average person, the average male, is three inches taller than the average male. Was that anywhere else? I thought I saw. It went by fast, and I was too busy looking at at the Dutch line. But I want to say it was too. Canadian. Okay. I could be wrong, but I want to say it said Canadian. I love how you said that. Canadian. Well, because I wasn't sure. I wasn't <laughs> sure. I wasn't that sure. That was awesome. But that was great. We appreciate, as always, we don't know geography now. We don't know bars, but we, they, they allow us to react to their videos. So we really appreciate that and the things that we learn. I'm always fascinated by the graphics thing to myself. I can't so do that. Good. I can't do that. Yeah. I can't do that. And it's I know they so got good. a team, but still, show them love like Joy was saying earlier. Subscribe, like, all that kind of stuff. We won't forget to visit some more geography nows in the future. Don't forget to visit us as well. But with all that being said, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time. Goodbye.